Kanheri Caves were one of the major Buddhist centers in western India during ancient times. They were built between the 1st century BC to 10th century AD and acted as monastery and learning center for more than 1000 years. It is located within the Sanjay Gandhi National Park in north of Mumbai and consists of 109 caves. It was one of the largest Buddhist monastic settlements in India. The cave complex has 51 ancient inscriptions and 26 epigraphs. It is famous for its rock-cut monolithic stupas and hundreds of statues of Buddha and Bodhisattvas. It is also known for the water harvesting system developed by the ancient engineers thousands of years ago still in working condition. The cisterns built for collecting water for the daily use of monks are providing a home to these crabs, blowing bubbles and raising their young ones. Eventually these young crabs will outgrow the smaller cisterns and move to the larger water tanks built by the monks centuries ago. The larger stone tanks are also home to the schools of fishes including these tiny catfishes. The Kanheri Monastery was Theravada in origin. Later it became an important center for Mahayana doctrine. Initially it was used during the rainy retreats of the monks. Once the caves became permanent monasteries, intricate reliefs of Buddha and the Bodhisattvas started to be carved into the walls. Kanheri became an important center of Buddhism in western India by the 3rd century AD. The caves of Kanheri were used for living, learning and religious practices. The larger caves were chatyas or hall for worship. The hills in which the caves are situated is known as the Krishnagiri or Kanhagiri hill. It is a large mass of compact basalt rock. The highest point of the complex is 1550 feet above sea level. The caves were built on different levels of the hill. The majority of the rocket caves follow a standard model of a single or double rooms for monks with rocket benches and a narrow veranda. They also have a cistern for the collection of water for the daily use of the monks. Windows and holes cut into walls provided natural light and ventilation to the caves. The cave complex had a very developed system for water harvesting. Rocket cisterns, some filled with water year-round, are still present beside the paths, together with the channels that once conducted water to the monuments. The caves are present on the three hills. A stream flows between the north and the south hill. The ancient engineers converted the catchment area into a water reservoir by building two small stone walls. The dam walls are still present today. Five large water tanks were constructed to supply water to all the caves. These tanks were connected with a network of channels. Each cave used to have its water cisterns for the daily use of the monks. Kanheri is the only Buddhist monastic cave settlement in India which was continuously inhabited by monks for more than 1600 years. Buddhism was in decline in India after the 10th century. The Islamic invasions during the 11th and 12th centuries dealt a severe blow to Buddhism in Western India. Kanheri survived that onslaught. Small groups of Buddhist monks continued to occupy the caves. But Kanheri was not able to survive the religious rage of Portuguese invasion during the 16th century. The remaining Buddhist ascetics still living in the cave complex were converted into Christianity by them in 1535. Many of the caves suffered a lot of damage at their hands. One father Antonio even converted the main chatya into the church of St. Michael. One can reach this Buddhist site through the gate of Sanjay Gandhi National Park. The entry of the Kanheri cave complex is off the western side of the hill. Immediately after entry into the complex, one is greeted by the imposing structure of cave number one. 
Cave number one is one of the highest caves in the complex, though it is not one of the earliest of the structures. It was built during the sixth and seventh century. The cave was abandoned at an early age and was left unfinished. The two high columns of the cave give it a very imposing appearance. Cave number two is one of the oldest structure here. The front walls of the cave are missing now. It has got two chambers. The first chamber has a monolithic stupa with a hermika. Hermika is a square structure on the top of the dome of a Buddhist stupa symbolizing heaven. It has a beautifully carved seated Buddha on the rear wall of the cave. The second chamber also has a monolithic stupa with traces of polish on the dome. It is one of the oldest structures in the cave complex, dating back to the 3rd to 2nd century BC. The cave contains beautiful carvings on the wall which are of later era. The carvings depict preaching Buddha and Avalokiteshvara. There is a large vihara adjacent to the stupa which is more than 16 meters wide. There is also a two-line inscription in the cave which dates back to the 2nd century AD. Cave number 3 is the largest and most imposing structure in the complex. It is also known as the Great Chatya. The work on the cave was started during the 2nd century AD and it remains unfinished. The Chatya cave was built during different stages spread over several centuries. The inscriptions at the Great Chatya mention that the cave was built during the reign of Yagishri Satkarni who was a Satvahana king. The cave has got a large coat that is walled by a carved ornamental railing. Large male deities guard the entrance. Large columns more than 9 meters in height are carved with male figures. Figures of bodhisattvas are carved on the base of the columns. Before entering the main chatya, one enters a veranda, the side wall of which contains a large Buddha figure on each side. The Buddha figures are more than 6.5 meters in height, carved during the 5th to 6th century AD. Above the Buddha images, deities from heaven are depicted in flying position. The Buddha statues have their hands opened outwards and downwards, called Varda Mudra or Poon Bestowing Mudra. The walls have several smaller Buddha images carved on them. The Great Chatyagri is very large, 26 meters long and 13.5 meters wide. There are two rows of octagonal columns. There are 34 columns in total. Most of them contain images of animals and images of footprints below the Bodhi tree. The height of the cave is more than 13 meters. The ceiling of the cave was covered with timber which has all been destroyed now. There are notches on the ceilings and walls of the caves. These notches are evidence of large use of timber in the cave complex. All columns lead to a large monolithic stupa at the rear of the cave which is 6 meters in height and 5 meters in diameter. The cylindrical stupa provides a divine aura to the interior of the cave. Two brick stupas were present in the front of the Chaitya hall which got destroyed. One of these structural stupas contained a relic with a copper plate inscription. Left to the great Chaitya is cave number 4, which is a small circular Chaitya with a monolithic stupa. The hermika of the stupa is connected to the cave ceiling through a chhatra. Another significant cave in the complex is called Darbar Hall, which is cave number 11. The long veranda of Darbar Hall has eight octagonal columns and two square columns. The interior of the cave is large, more than 10 meters in length and 22 meters wide. The Darbar Hall contains a preaching Buddha image between the images of bodhisattvas. Cave number 34 contains a painting of Buddha on the ceiling which is the only mural of Kanheri and the oldest example of mural art anywhere at the Buddhist sites of Western Ghats. 
However, this image of Buddha is only partially coloured. Cave number 41 contains a four-armed, eleven-headed image of Avalokiteshvara which was not found at any other ancient Buddhist site across India. Cave 67 is very large and contains some of the most beautiful artwork inside the complex. The hall is 12 meters in length and 14 meters wide. The side walls and the rear walls are covered with beautiful Buddha images of different sizes. The small Buddha images alternate with large Buddha images in the standing position. Cave number 90 has some of the best preserved images of Buddha in the cave complex. The side wall contains image of Avalokiteshvara holding lotus along with images of Tara and Prakti. The last cave in the complex is cave number 101. Beyond the caves, there is a cemetery of Buddhist monks who used to live here. It contains several structural brick stupas which are not in good condition now. Ganeri functioned as one of the most significant Buddhist monastic settlement in Western India. Cave number 66 contains an ancient Japanese inscription by some visiting Japanese pilgrims. 11th century inscriptions by visiting Parsis have also been found within the cave complex. During the ancient ages, the Kanheri settlement was well connected to many trade centers. These trade centers included Sopara, Kalyan, Kala, Bhaja and Patan. The traders and kings of these cities also provided patronage to the monastic complex. Kanheri was a major center of Theravada in the beginning and later for Mahayana and Tantric Buddhism. The monks and students have long left the hills, but the caves and its images still tell the story of its past glory and significance of the major center of Buddhism that was Kanheri. <laughs>